There are so many paintings to paint in Charleston. All the houses are gorgeous. I'm painting this one on Arsh rough press paper in a block so it's easy to handle. And I'm mostly using my round sable number 14. I start out with a quick overall wash of cobalt blue. And see this beautiful scene. I'm going to brighten up the creamy yellow of the building. And it's the same one we did last week in our How to Draw Two Point Perspective video that shows you all about the different planes and how to draw them. Um, and they're very important when you're doing a heavily shadowed painting like this because it shows you where to put the shadows. So I'm just dashing the brush around and here we sped it up just a tiny bit and dashing the brush around a little bit ultramarine blue in the foreground, a little bit darker in the foreground. Really this painting is about light and shadows and it really needs to be painted on rough pressed paper for that wonderful sparkly texture. For the greens, I can just add a little bit of Nico Azo for the first dull greens of the live oak tree. And um, then I'll add a little bit more phthalo green to get a kind of brighter for some of the other colors. But this is really more about the house. And I've intensified it from the duller texture, the duller beigey texture, to more of a bright yellow just for fun. So I'm dashing my brush around, just letting my brush dance, put on some music, have some fun. And um, just leave lots of holes. It's very important for a sparkly painting like this. Here I'm adding some phthalo green for the brighter, darker bushes back there. And just let your brush dance and leave lots of holes and work with the texture of the paper and you'll get those deep darks with the, the sparks of light in them. Now notice while I'm going into it I'm not overworking it. I'm, I let it dry for a minute I'm going back in, it's it's partially dried, everything's blurred, and I want all these greens to blur because most of them I don't want sharp edges because once again, they're not the stars of the show. The shadows and the play of light are. A little bit more greens there. Just a nice texture. So all the different vegetation will have different brush strokes that go with it. Sometimes you'll want a little bit of a rough stroke and show those sparks of leaves and some of it they'll just be a dense dark shadowy bushes. Now I'm going to start this out with Azo Yellow and it's not going to look green because I've let it dry and that is absolutely critical. You need it to dry. I'm going to add some warmer colors on top of it so it'll be even less green, but we're not looking for a greenhouse. We're looking for a warm yellow house. So just going along in there. I want the scrubby texture that's stucco. So I'm using kind of a dry brush over that. And then I add some of the texture with some nickel azo yellow. And I'm just brushing lightly over. I'm not covering the entire thing. You know, painting a house, it's not a house painter. Just want that wonderful stucco, that tabby texture. Now I need to paint in that little hole there. And look at what you're painting. Always take a look. Even if I made a decision, I wanted it brighter. But I know what that decision is, and I'm still referring to the photo, any sketches I do. Ideally, you're painting from life. Um, 
keep referring to what your subject is, even if you change things. So just some little dashes in here between the balustrades. A little dry brush to indicate some of the moldings and stuff. It doesn't take much just to get the idea. I'm going to contrast with more of the white of the building on the right with this green. I want to really bring that out. Just some little feathery strokes. And I'm using Nicolazzo yellow, some phthalo green, a little bit of cobalt blue. So it's all kind of mixed in there. And here is some burnt sienna. I'm just doing a nice vertical stroke. It has a little bit of a highlight on it at the top. And I don't want to cover up all the blue. Well, really they're highlights when, at that point. And then I can add a little bit of texture on there with some horizontal strokes. And I've mixed that with a tiny bit of ultramarine blue. So it's a burnt sienna with a tiny bit of ultramarine blue. And um, just for that shadow area up there. horizontal strokes but not covering up all the highlights just for that wonderful palm tree texture or palmetto and then integrate it with where the shadows will be extremely deep at the base. So this is the next wash. I've let things dry and painted on it a bit. You can see where the flag is going to be kind of a highlight of the painting, you know, where it hits some sparkles there. And I want those deep shutters, that greeny bluey color that contrasts perfectly with the yellow of the house. And I'm just, I want, I don't want to paint the windows like they're cutouts, so I'm just blurring them a little bit with my finger at the end. Um, you could do it with your brush, with your finger, whatever. Now it's time to add some really, really deep shadows. Because these walls, you know, they have wonderful patterns on them. Some burnt sienna for the warmth. So while they're, they're deep and dark, they're very warm darks. Charleston is a hot country or city and there's a lot of warm colors and even in the winter it does feel like its own little country wonderful i love nothing better than wandering around charleston some cobalt violet burnt sienna ultramarine blue just mix it up with the shadows deep dark and warm And rough pressed paper will be perfect for 
letting those little highlights show up. Just dashing, play with the paint, have some fun. Keep that brush dancing. More um, vertical ridges on the old live oak tree. Uh, the, so the, the palm tree uh, has more the horizontal ridges around it. And the oak tree is definitely very vertical and then some bulges where the trunk is. What's really interesting is if you'll notice with the live oaks especially is they're usually much heavier in their upper portions than in the trunk, even though it's huge, is skinnier. So I'm going to want to integrate the shadows more with the shadows on the the wall and everything. More phthalo green. I want a really strong dark there. And that's a tricky one because that needs to be integrated with the other shadows of the wall. But, and I want it to frame the house. You know, my central focus, you're drawn to the door and the flag. But I you know, it, it divides it a lot, but you still want those little sparks in there where it still pulls you in. You want to walk down that door. Some shadows to make the windows have a little bit of depth. They're fairly plain um, and they're just deep for the deep old stucco to keep it cool. And while I go around the paint, most of the windows are the same color or the shadows, you know, in about the same plane are about the same color. You want to really watch it because, you know, sometimes they are and sometimes they're not. So you need to really pay attention to that, to variations in color. Pull the trunk of the tree into the other shadows so it's all pulls together, framing the house, because that's the point of it. We're not painting the tree, we're painting the house. That's the focal point. So a bit more pulling those shadows together. Burnt sienna. I want I want that very deep and dark. That feels like hot sun. And while I want those lines of the street pulling me along, I don't want them pulling me completely out the painting, so I need to watch how I finish them. Now it's time for the really fun part. Just increase the depth of that, that beautiful porch. And I, so I want some really deep, dark shadows underneath there. That's going to draw my center of attention to where I want it. And it's also, it's just a really important part of the painting to have the, the high contrast right there.
And as you notice, I'm staying with a fairly limited palette the entire time. Not changing colors around them, changing more how I use them. More of that wonderful shadow on the front of the building. Those trees really do leave just fabulous shadows. And also, that's going to help me highlight that wonderful porch again. And the flag because I want that to appear just bright and glowing against the house. So now I've started using some detail with the rigger. I'm not holding a rigger like I would for doing tree limbs, like I did earlier up in the live oak tree, you can see. I'm doing kind of holding it midway so I can do some tiny little details, but still pretty loose. And I want the wrought iron to show how intricate it is, intricate it is, but not every single line of it, because that would get very busy and distracting. And here we've sped it up a bit, so you can see there's a fair amount of detail in there. So I'm not drawing every single line. I'm drawing where um, the drawings, drawing where the lines are most important, and that includes this area at the top of the house. There, I want a little bit more of the intricate moldings that they have up there, but not too much. And cobalt teal, and I did use cobalt teal a little bit on the right. And building as you can tell as well so use the same limited color palette all around the painting I'm blurring some edges here a few more details on um, some white gouache on the flag and that's I think the only place I use white gouache in the entire painting so maybe a tiny bit of highlights around the oak tree. So that's very much it at the end touch. And here is the finished painting with a few more darks in there. And that's about it. So thank you very much for watching and please share your paintings that hopefully this inspires you because I hope this inspires you to go and paint a beautiful old house in your neighborhood. I hope you have a wonderful time painting. I can't wait to see. Thanks for watching and please visit my website paintingwatercolor.com for more information. Happy painting! <music>